Hello everyone and welcome back to our building series. In this episode we'll be uh, finishing off our panel that we use for our mining copper uh, drill block. And currently we set up our, our panel, we just need to tie it all up and get it spawning onto the screen and make it so that we can click on the button to collect the ore that we've mined. So to do that we need to go into our mining block parent. So go into there and inside here we need the interact event. So event interact with and on the event interact with we're going to drag that out and we're going to create a widget and you're going to choose your mining panel. Now when you do that it's going to ask for various things here so the block name, item name and mining block. The block name is going to be the name of the block that you're trying to place based on the uh, item data uh, database. So that you'll find in your block data table. And it's the row name, so it's mining copper. So block name here, I'm going to do mining underscore copper. Item name, I've already got here, so I'm going to drag that out and choose get and plug that into item name. Okay, so next we need the mining block, and the mining block is going to be itself. So drag that out and choose self to get the reference to itself there. Excellent. Okay, next we're going to take that return value and promote that to a variable. Now the reason why we want to do that is because we need to be able to turn it off again. So to be able to do that, we need a reference to it. So here's the reference and we're going to store that as the mining panel UI. And then we're going to tell that thing to add it to the viewport. Which then makes it render to the screen. Excellent. Okay, now go back to the start of this and you're going to drag out your mining panel UI. Which is get right click on it and convert to validate get and plug that in at the start here okay so what this is going to do is say if it's not valid we want to create it so it comes down to the create from it's not valid if it is valid we're going to tell it to remove itself from the screen so to do that you drag the reference out and choose get and then from there you do remove from parent plug that into is valid and then set your mining panel to nothing so this way, when every time you interact with it, it will be turned on, then off. It will toggle it between the two. Okay, hit compile. So that will handle that side of things. So to test this out, we're going to go back and push play. And let's place a mining drill copper bit here. Now if I interact with this with E, there you go. It's now showing our panel here. Now at the moment, we can't click on nothing can't do nothing here it's just showing it as it is and you can see our wrap text hasn't worked either so what we need to do is change a few things on here so for that let's go back into our mining uh, panel yeah okay now click on the text we've got here and rather than auto wrap text we're going to change wrap text at a certain value now, auto rep text, we're going to change to whatever is the width of this box here. So we're just going to estimate roughly. So 200 and now 400. There you go. That'll do. And then go to my graph. And on my graph here, we're going to, when it's constructed, change the player's input to use the mouse. So we're going to go on here, get player controller, set input mode to UI and then we're going to set to show mouse and that comes from the player controller and that's inserted before we do our refresh panel because we don't want to do it there we only want to do it here then when we destruct it down here we need to do the, basically the opposite so get player controller set input mode to game and UI and then set show mouse cursor this time making it false that way it hides the mouse when you return back to the game so let's test that out and see how that works so push tab build a mining drill interact with it and now I can see I can click on the block here and so forth push E to close 
Ah, procedure clear close won't work because we are in UI mode only. So if I change that to uh, a different input mode here, uh, we'll change that to game and UI. That way it should still receive inputs, I believe. So let's test that out and build that in. There you go. So now I'm back into the game. The mouse hasn't been captured yet, so we need to take to recapture the mouse. So every time you change the uh, input mode from game and UI, you need to do that and take it to go back to just game. So let's change that one to just game. To game only. Plugging that one in at the bottom there. So that's when it's destroyed. It should now go back. Okay, there you go. So now I can view this block. I can click on the button. It won't do nothing because it's got zero in there at the moment and we ain't done the code for it. But at least we can click on it and close it, open it, close it, open it. Okay, next we want to check that we are actually generating power from this thing. So if I were to build a solar panel, the idea is, is I connect these up like so. And if I interact with this thing, I want to be able to see this increase. Okay. So to do that, you can see it increasing now when I, when I click on it. Now to increase it uh, by looking at it whilst looking at it, we need to take to use the refresh function on our uh, UI. So if I go to my mining block and go to where I want it to refresh, so this will be on the produce thing here. And on here at the end, I'm going to drag my mining panel UI out, choose get, and then from there, I'm going to to refresh panel. Okay. Uh, whilst we're here, we're also going to add another variable in here, and that will be uh, production uh, amount. That will also be an integer. And that will be plugged into the the plus one here. So rather than just plusing one, it will plus whatever production amount we've been told to increase it by. So I'm going to start off with one, so you can see it working. Okay, so now when I'm looking at it, it should refresh the UI and update it accordingly. So now I've got zero, and as it gains power, it will start mining blocks. I've got two blocks, and got, that'll go all the way up to 20. So, now we have to get the blocks out of our drill and into our player's inventory. So for that, we need to go into, uh, what's this? Uh, valid input, let's have a look what that's causing that. Uh, that's correct. We'll just make sure it's valid. We'll just do an is valid node here. And hope that gets with that ever. Yeah, okay, brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna click on that button to add to our inventory. Now, currently we don't have an add to inventory function, so we need to make that first. So go into your inventory component, and in here, we're gonna add another function to our list we've got here. So a new function, add item. And add items is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna take the inventory map out, choose get. And from there, we need to find what items we currently got in there that match the same as what we have, and then add the two together. So from here, we need to find the item we want to add. So on the inputs for add items, go to the right hand side and add a new input and this would be item name and that would be the name. Plug that into your inventory map. So the inventory map will search for it and find how many we have currently in there. What we're going to do then is we're going to add an integer to it and we're going to add a quantity we're adding to it. So on add items we're going to add another input. 
and that'd be quantity. Which will be an integer. And that will plug into the add we've got here. So we're finding what we've currently got. If it is zero or one or two, doesn't really matter. It's going to come out and add whatever quantity we need to add to it. We're then going to add, use the function add to our map here to create an updated entry. So add and plug that in. And then we've got item name and quantity going into it. So quantity is going to come from this new integer here. And item name is going to go from there to there. Hit compile. And that is it. Now, the reason why you do it this setup is because the way the add function works, if the item already exists in the map, it will just override it, which is not what we want. We want it to addition an extra values onto it. So we need to take what kind of values we have in there and add the new value to it to override it again. So now we've got the add items inventory uh, function there. We're going to call that function when we click on that button. So on your mining panel UI, go to your button on the variable list here. Scroll down, you'll find on clicked. Click on the big green plus. When you're doing this, we're then going to go get player character. Cast to first person character in my case. And then we're going to get the inventory component. On that inventory component, we're then going to take it to add items. And the item we're going to add is going to be our item name. Now it's important to note we need to take the item name and we're going to take it from the row data, not this item name here. So you drag out from the row data, choose get and split that. And we want this name here. So as you can see, you can't plug it directly in. First of all, we have to turn it to a string. So type in string and you'll see the to string function, which then can be transformed into a name. And the quantity we're going to add here is going to be whatever the quantity is of our uh, of our text field. So the text field is going to come from the mining block. Just get, and then from there, get inventory current and add that in. Now we also will need to update the mining block and change its current inventory back to zero. So take the mining block and we're going to use the set current inventory to zero. And that is it. When we click the button, it's going to just take the items from the block and add items to the inventory. So hit save and I'm going to go into my player character before we test this out and tell our inventory component to start off with zero copper. So I'm going to add element here, type in copper and leave it at zero. Hit compile. Then I'm going to go and push play. So if I go into my tab menu and go to inventory, I'll see copper there with time zero. So I've got none of it. Go to build and we're going to need a solar panel. And we're also going to need a mining drill. Hook the two up like so. I'm going to look at my mining drill here and watch that number increase. Okay, and to two, click on that. You can see it's gone down to zero. We need to take it to refresh, we forgot to do that. But if I go into my inventory now, I've now got two copper. So we just need to tell our inventory to refresh and that is it, we are done. So let's go into my uh, mining block UI panel. And when we've done that, just call the refresh panel function and compile that. So let's test that out properly. So build a solar panel to power it up. Then the mining block, then gonna click there and then there. And then watch my money drill, drill up a load of copper. And there's one. Two, three, and I'm gonna take those three. And you can see it updated. And if I go to my inventory now, you'll see I'll now have three copper. And that is it. And that's how you do it. So now we've got that in there. I see we've got an error here now. Um, let's have a look at this here. 
Okay, so refresh panel here with mining block UI. I'm just going to right click and convert that to validated get to make sure it is valid. Now get rid of that error there. Um, so as I was saying, um, what we need to do is now make it so we can upgrade our blocks. So I'm going to use that copper to upgrade my solar panel to output more power. Uh, and then we can build other blocks and so on and so forth. So in the next part, we'll work on upgrading. So if you want to watch that part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady where you can watch that part plus many other my videos before anyone else, sometimes months in advance. Thank you so much to all my patrons for continued support. It really is amazing how much you guys support me. Uh, I wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so thank you again so, so much. If you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.